Another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL 17 Hasu League Group F, I believe. I think F and G are the only that remain. This is the final game that I have from this bracket. It looks like Jiraiya uploaded the replays. In the round of 32, players are not required to upload replays. I believe they are required to in the round of 16, however. Hopefully they're a little bit more organized in that round. Up right, uh, sorry, bottom right-hand corner, we have Erob starting from Team Rev, the illustrious Team Rev. Starting as the Red Protoss, bottom left-hand corner, we've got Jiraiya starting as the Blue Zerg. I believe Erob also provided this game. This is the winner's match. And I have to say, I am really excited about the round of 16 because usually it... Typically in Hasu League, it feels like you have the initial rounds, which are a little bit rough. People are playing with nerves. And then the quality of games improves as the season progresses. It looks like Irob is going to end up with first scout going bottom left-hand corner. Actually, he might adjust because it looks like he's going for the Overlord trick. And oftentimes, oh, that's unfortunate. Oftentimes, Protoss end up playing themselves a little bit when they go for that trick. Because it's a 50-50 chance to catch that Overlord. So instead, it's going to end up scouting Jiraiya last. Let's see if Jiraiya opens up with... What's been popular from Zerg these days, which is op that pool opener, at least I've seen a lot of Zerg doing that. Jiraiya 2v2 player has a multitude of builds under his belt. Looks like he is opening up Overlord first this time. We'll see how deep Jiraiya goes. He's a pretty solid player in his own right. Also want to give a shout out to Team Rev, in including Ver. Go check out Ver. He oftentimes is casting Gosu League. I haven't seen him as active this season. Forge first opener for Irob, and so I feel like Irob is playing Aye, 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 out in chat, by the way. I do. I feel like Irob is playing maybe a half step back on the meta, where we've seen a lot of Protoss players moving back towards a Forge first opener. And I'm curious to see as the, the tournament progresses, if we see more and more one base play overall. And I'm wondering if we're going to see that shift continue. It feels like there's a little bit of instability. It looks like we saw either a 10 or 9 hatch opener, maybe an 11 hatch. I missed the exact drone count, but we've got 9 drones left as the spawning pool is dropped. I should do the math there. So 11, 10, nine, yeah, so 11 hatch. Overall, Overlord able to scoot top left. I don't think it's intercepted the probe to make an adjustment, but now that this drone sees this probe making its way out, a media adjustment for Jiraiya going top right, unfortunately, rather than bottom right with the overall timing. So we're gonna end up a little bit later. Preventative cannon on the front, but Nexus did go down first. In the dark, so a little bit of bravery there from Irab overall. But getting back to my previous point, it feels like there have been really good games already in the round of 32. And so as this progresses, the game's getting better and better. This could be an amazing season of Hasu League. Potentially the best yet. Gateway now down on the front. This is looking pretty uh, typical from Irab. Neither player... Oh, look at this. A quick third hatchery from Jiraiya before gas, however. So in producing four Zerglings, so two pair but mostly droning otherwise. So he's looking for... And that that's kind of a psychic play right there, recognizing, okay, he probably opened up Nexus first. I might be trying to play economic catch-up. So rather than going for faster gas, let me just go straight three hatch and play from there. Trying to intercept that probe specifically wants to deny information to that nine o'clock base because oftentimes when Protoss see this, they know that they can skip Stargate overall, but it looks like he's not able to deny that probe scout. This also does provide the possibility of 973 as far as a follow-up, but with the gas coming down a little bit later. Ooh, idle drone right there, that hurts. But it looks like Irab able to sneak in. Is there going to be a block? Oh, able to go straight past and see that late extractor. And that is a massive amount of information for Irab. So let's see if he ends up skipping Stargate and just goes for immediately into Gateway Flood. That tends to be the play, especially behind the forge here. And let's see if he goes a little bit, pads Dragoons a little bit, but you know that layer tech is coming much, much later, so you don't need that Stargate for quite some time. And Initial Zealot also marching out, that might be a little bit brave. Primarily because he needs to keep an eye on how many Zerglings are potentially produced. Dry in the meantime, folding back to four hatcheries immediately, not bothering with Spyro altogether. So it looks like he wants to make a transition straight to five hatchery play. This looks very reminiscent of what Erdmon was doing previously. So it's going to be 4-hatch Hydralisk. I'm wondering if this is now the, the current meta. An Overlord might get sacked here by this Dragoon, but seeing that Dragoon at all should give Dry an indication that it's either a later Stargate or no, no Stargate at all, because this is a smidge of gas that goes into that Dragoon that tends to delay things. 
Overlord getting wiped out, putting Jirai in the red, and that we do see the Gateway Flood. And a Citadel of Adun behind this to go immediately into Rapid. I assume let's go for a... Uh, there's going to be a move to... It might even be like a 630 plus one Zealot push out. Depending on a lot of factors. Five, fifth Hatchery now being planted and drones being cycled up to that 9 o'clock. Dragoon just staging out to make sure no additional overlords are able to make their way across. But in the meantime, you're somewhat in the dark as far as what the transition is. So moving out a Zealot to chase off these Zerglings. The Zerglings shouldn't be able to get past that cannon, particularly because I don't know that Zergling speed was ever invested in. Yeah, you can see they're moving quite slow and taking a bit of free damage as well. Jiraiya trying to keep eyes on how many Zealots are on the front to get an idea of what the gateway count is behind this. We do see Zealot leg speed about halfway finished. And yeah, I think this is going to be a sub seven minute zealot push out without the Corsair support, but a larger amount of zealots and leg speed. So should be interesting. We'll see if Jiraiya gets a decent SimCity up. He's already setting up a preventative Sutton Colony a bit early on that. So that's one less drone potentially out in the field. And he's starting to fill in the Hydralisks now, which might be necessary. And that's pretty wise considering the lack of information he has. Now we've got that, that Templar archives dropping as well. So zealot leg speed just about to hit. And yeah, here it comes. And I, I feel actually pretty proud of my prognostications as a caster here, getting the timing of all this. So this is going to be sub 7 minutes, 6.30 move out as plus 1 weapons and out leg speed because of that skip of the Stargate, able to move out. Getting better at this. All right. Improvements have been made. We'll see if they continue. However, a decent SimCity out here from Jiraiya. He's got a good grouping of Hydralis, but he needs to blockade the ramp on the low side. Irov actually not, instead of running for the main, which is what I was expecting to do, actually folding around trying to take out that Sun Colony, and I think because he's trying to engage all this wholesale, that's opening up the drone drill possibility. So yeah, the Zelts getting disturbed, and now the Hydralisks moving down from the 9 o'clock location and able to clean that up, and as a result, he's able to take out, it looks like maybe a few drones, maybe a drone or two, but still, this is a very strong economy for Jiraiya filtering out of this, and it looks like the Hydralisks are going to be able to clean up what's left of the Zealots. A very solid defense from Jiraiya. The Zelts continuing to try to move in. It looks like now going to get chased down. A few Zerglings filtered in. They build a little bit faster. Psy Storm on the way. The Evolution Chamber hasn't started yet. The four Zelts still wanting to test the front. Europe really wanted that to work. Now is going to fold back. But economically, Jiraiya in a very, very strong position. Has the Sunken Colony up to 9 o'clock to provide some support. Europe just filtering in more troops. Thinks he can... Perhaps feeling he can just pressure or maybe recognizing that he might be able to cycle up to the 9 o'clock. Really wants to push that plus one weapons advantage. There's some Zerglings and Hydralisks there. He needs to be very, very careful though. Let's we'll see if the Hydralisks move up. So this is where I think Irob's trying to test and find some Hydralisks out in the open field. So yeah, now folding down to engage the troops down here. But he needs to be very careful that his army doesn't get wiped out because he ends up losing this army. That means he's potentially going to end up losing a shot at a third base, and right now Jiraiya's economy is very, very strong. So he can continually produce these troops without too much trouble. And now he's got a slew... Yeah, wiped out Irob's army and overstep. Now he's got a slew of Hydralisks to move to the front. Psystorm is going to be in place, but that's still leaving not a lot of army for Irob to break out, and on top of that, yeah, he has to drop a preventative photon cannon just to make sure he doesn't end up getting busted at his natural expansion potentially if Jiraiya decided to turn on the gas. Looks like some, speaking of gas, drones being pushed in there. Jiraiya recognizing that that army is wiped out so he can probably get some free damage. If he takes out that forge, that could be significant. He's already got the cannon at the natural down, able to wipe out some additional zealots. The size storm is going to have to be on point here. Beautiful size storm catching a lot of those hydralisks. So that's leaving five remaining. Archon morphing. Unfortunately, they're might have missed a Zealot cycle somewhere here for Irob because the Hydralisks now doing a lot of damage to the natural expansion, forcing probes off the line. And Jiraiya has sent a full additional control group of troops, but they're holding outside the natural. I really want to see him take out this forge because I think that would be a big win as far as a continuation play. But instead, it looks like he just wants to try to end it. So pushing in, we do have some additional Psy Storm to maybe clean this up. Irob not in the greatest position, however. Jiraiya looks like he could close this out, working on that pylon at the natural expansion. He wants to win it right here. We have a slew of blue making the way this direction. Taking out that pylon is just as good at stopping that forge production. Also takes out that gateway. 
And now more, more and more Hydra is starting to push in and Jiraiya with a solid drone economy feels like he can win it through just constant pressure. And let's see if that'll end up being the case. Irab flooding, no, calling it there, recognizing he just can't keep up. So Jiraiya takes it, he will advance to the final round. I'm not sure who made it out of the rest of the bracket. We'll have to see in the round of 16. But hope you guys enjoyed it. An exciting one at the end. Thank you for listening.